Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing transposition. Now this is video two or four on a kind of step-by-step -step series I'm doing on how to do transposition. If you're, not watch, if you're not sure what transposition is, it's rearranging equations basically, go and watch the transposition intro video and that'll explain the concepts. It'll also explain why we do it, why it's so useful in practice. Um, so in the first video I went through um, equations that involve just the last of four steps that I recommend you follow when you're trying to do transposition. So it's just like solving equations, you follow these four steps, and if you follow them in order, by the time you've finished, you'll always have solved your problem at the end. So let me just quickly remind you what those four steps are, I think that'll help. So step one is remove fractions, step two is remove brackets, step three is move added and subtracted terms, that's what we're going to be looking at in this video, and finally step four, you divide by the number next to the letter. So the first video, we were just looking at equations that involve the last step where you divide by the number next to the letter. In this video we're also going to have ones that will involve step three. So we'll be moving added or subtracted terms first and then we'll be dividing by the number next to the letter. Videos three and four will go on to look at the first two steps and include those as well. So the, the difficulty is getting gradually harder as we go through the videos. All right, so first example then. Um, well actually before I do the proper transposition example let me do you a quick reminder of how it would work if you were just solving normal equations. So if we had 2x plus 1 equals 7, that's just a standard equation. If we were asked to solve this equation, we're trying to get the unknown letter, the x in this case, by itself. So remember x just represents a number. We want to get it by itself, so you follow the four steps. Step 1 is fractions. Remove any fractions. There are none, so we can skip that. Step 2 is remove brackets. No brackets. Skip. Step 3 is to move added and subtracted terms. We do have added and subtracted terms, there's a plus here. So you want all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other side. So leave the 2x where it is, take the plus 1 and move it over. Remember, chain side is chain signs. So the plus 1 becomes a minus 1. So you're going to get 2x equals 7 minus 1. Obviously, we can work out what 7 minus 1 is. That's going to be 6. And then the last step is you divide by the number next to the letter. In this case, the number next to the letter is 2. So we divide everything by 2. So you divide by 2 on the left, and you divide by 2 on the right. The reason we do that is because these 2's will then cancel, which will leave you with the letter by itself. And 6 divided by 2 is obviously 3. So that's how you solve a normal equation. Now transposition, if you remember, it was exactly the same as solving equations. It's just that most, if not all, of the numbers have been replaced by letters. But in algebra, letters are numbers, so you don't actually do anything different. So let's try our first proper example. So if we have... 2p plus q equals r, and for transposition you'll always be told in the question which letter you want by itself. They'll usually say transpose, and then they give you an equation, for a particular letter. So let's say in this case the letter we want by itself is p. Now I always write it at the top right and stick it in a circle so I don't forget which letter it is. It can be quite easy to lose track with all the different letters moving around of which letter you're actually trying to get by itself. So I put it here, and then I don't forget. All right, so we want the p's by itself. So step one is remove fractions, no fractions. Step two is remove brackets, no brackets. Step three is move added and subtracted terms. Now you want all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other side, yeah, just like we had here. We wanted all the x's on one side and all the numbers moved over to the other side. Now over here, we want all the p's on one side and everything else that's been added or subtracted to it needs to be moved across to the other side, yeah? So the r's and the q's we want over here the P's and anything next to it, that's fine, we'll leave that on the left. So move the plus Q over to the right, it becomes a minus Q, chain sides, chain signs. So we're going to get 2P equals R minus Q. Yep, just like we had over here, we took the plus 1 and moved it over and became a minus 1. The plus Q moves over and becomes a minus Q. Now we've got all our P's, the letter we want, by themselves on one side, and all our other letters, our other numbers, are on the other side. So in this one, we had to then work out what 7 minus 1 gave us. But for transposition, it's actually easier because you don't need to work this out. You don't know what R, 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 you don't know what R is and you don't know what Q is either, so you can't work out what R minus Q is. You just leave it like that. So next step then, or the last step, you divide by the number next to the letter. 
Which letter do we care about? We care about the P. So we're dividing next to the we're dividing by the number next to the P. So we're going to divide everything by two. So you divide by two on the left. Now don't try and be clever here, just divide everything by two. We cancel these twos, which leaves us with a P by itself. And again, just leave this fraction as it is. Don't try and cancel anything or mess around with it. If you leave it as it is, it's usually fine. So this will be our transposed equation. Again, if you're wondering why we bother doing this, go and watch the transposition intro video. This is very useful in practice, and that intro video will explain why it's useful and why we do it. But this would be the answer. So you start off with this equation. If you want the P by itself, we've now got all the P's by themselves on one side. Everything else is on the other side. So we've done it. Hooray. Okay, let's have another example. Now, there are a lot of famous equations in physics, and I'm going to try and use them whenever I can as we go through the examples. As the examples get harder, you'll find there are more physics equations that we can actually use. Uh, so we'll try this one. I mean, this is maths, really, as much as physics. y equals mx plus c. Hopefully that's familiar. This is the general equation of a straight line. So x and y are your coordinates for a particular point on a graph. m is the gradient of the line. And C is the y-intercept. Yep, so we're talking straight lines. You have some kind of straight line that passes through the y-axis at a particular point. The y-intercept is C. And we can work out the gradient of that line. It has a certain steepness, and we usually call that M. Yep. So that's the context here, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe you want to figure out what the gradient is. So you know what X are and Y are. Maybe you've got a particular point on the line, and you know what the y-intercept is and you want to find out what the gradient is. So we're going to try and get the m by itself. So step one, remove fractions, no fractions. Step two, remove brackets, no brackets. Step three is move added and subtracted terms, and yes, we do have added or subtracted terms. So we want all the m's on one side, and all the things that have been added and subtracted to it needs to be moved across to the other side. So in this case, it's the plus c that wants to be moved over. The x, we're going to leave to the last step. The number next to the letter, we always deal with on the last step, so don't try and do anything with the x. It's the plus c we want to move over to the other side. Chain sides, chain signs. Be careful here. The plus c will become a minus c. The y, which is positive, there's a kind of imaginary plus in front of that, will stay positive because we're not moving it. So I'm going to write the y first. I like to start with positive things if I can. And then we'll have the minus c afterwards. The mx then stays there. We're not going to mess around with that. So we've got all our letters that have been added or subtracted on one side, and the m bits have been left on the other side. Great. Final step, we divide by the number next to the letter. Again, which letter do we care about? It's m. So you want the m by itself, we're going to divide by the number next to the m, and the number next to the m is x. Remember, all these letters are numbers, really. So we divide everything by x, so big divide by x on the left, divide by x on the right. The reason we do that is because these x's will cancel, which will leave you with the m by itself. And again, don't try and mess around with what you get on the left. Just leave it as a fraction. You can't work it out because you don't know what y and c and, e and x are. So you just leave it like that. So we've done it. We've rearranged it. We've got the m by itself, which is what we were asked to do in the question. Now, if we were doing a bunch of experiments, you could shove in your values for x and y and c, and you could work out different gradients for different sets of data. That's how you might use it. But we've done all our rearrangement. The m is by itself. OK, let's do another one. I mean, you can see it's very similar to solving equations. I'm doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing here. It's just a lot of the time I can't work out like what 7 minus 1 is or 6 divided by 2 is. So I don't actually have to do the working out. So in that sense, as I say, once you get the hang of it, it definitely is easier to do. Okay, last one we'll look at. This is a very famous equation from physics. V equals U plus AT. Uh, this is for motion under constant acceleration. So if I have a, a pen, for example, and I drop it, then the only acceleration acting on this object is gravity, and gravity is constant. It's about 10 meters per second squared across the surface of the Earth. So when I drop this, it will have an initial speed, that's u, a final speed, v, which is you know for the length of the journey, and it'll take a certain amount of time. And so if I know the initial speed and the acceleration, 
and the time it takes, I can work out the final speed of the object. So if I have a pen and I drop it, then I know what the acceleration is. As I say, it's about 10 on the surface of the Earth. I could use a stopwatch to time it to work out how long it took to drop the pen. And the initial speed, well, if I drop it, the initial speed is zero. It starts not moving and then it starts to drop. So I could work out the final speed, you know, when it hits my hand and I grab it, I could work out how fast it's traveling just by timing how long it takes, shoving the numbers in. So this is used a lot. I mean, these are the kind of equations they might use if you're blasting a rocket into space or something. It is quite useful. But maybe you want to work out what the time is, not the final speed. Maybe you know the final speed of some object and you want to find out how long it took to travel that distance. So we're going to get the T by itself. Step one, remove fractions, no fractions. Step two, remove brackets, no brackets. Step three, move added and subtracted terms. So yes, we've got stuff that's being added or subtracted. We want all the T's on one side and everything that's been added or subtracted to it needs to be moved to the other side. So in this case, the AT is going to be left where it is. The U that's being added to it is going to be moved over to here. Again, change sides, change signs. So the V will stay positive. The U moves over and becomes a minus U. And the AT, which is positive, stays here. Final step then, divide by the number next to the letter. The letter we care about is T. The number next to it is A. Because remember, all letters are numbers. So we're going to divide everything by A. So divide by A, divide by A. Those A's cancel the issue with the T by itself. Don't try and do anything with this. Just leave it as a fraction. V minus U over A. The T's by itself. That's what we wanted. We've done it. Great. Don't worry about having it on the right. You can flip it round if you want to. Some people like to then have the letter by itself on the left hand side at the end. It doesn't really make any difference. The equal sign just means that the things on either side are the same. So you could finish by writing this if you wanted to. But as I say, it doesn't make much difference. All right, so that's it. As I said, there's not a lot to it. If you know how to solve equations, this is fairly straightforward. So go and watch Transposition 3 now if you want to know how to deal with brackets as well. Uh, and then finally, obviously, Transposition 4 will deal with the fractions, and then you'll be able to do everything. My name's Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.